Hey guys, so in this video I want to show a few examples where static friction will be used to keep a system from moving, either a block or a group of blocks. Let me show you. So it says here, friction can be used to keep as, um, objects from moving or accelerating. Um, in, this, in these cases, friction will be canceling out another force, okay? So let me show you. Um, here I have a 10 kilogram block that is being pushed against a vertical wall like this with, with a force F. What other forces do I have? So the first one you usually draw is mg, because there's always mg. Um, it's mass times gravity, so it's 10 times 10. I'm going to round gravity to 10 just to make it easier, and this will be 100. Now, if I push with an F, there's a counter force here. That force is called normal. And since I have coefficient of friction, so this is a rough surface, it's not smooth, and I have a normal, I will have friction. Remember, friction is mu normal, and I have both of these guys. But I want this, I want to know what is the force that I need, right, so that the block does not move. If the block doesn't move, right, usually it would go down. So if it's not moving, it's because friction is opposing that attempt of motion, um, friction this way. And it's a static friction because we want the block not to move. And if it doesn't move, it's because these forces are exactly the same. So the acceleration on the y-axis is zero. So that's the setup. Setup here, the beginning of this um, answer is that static friction must equal mg, which equals 100. All right? Now I can expand static friction. Static friction is mu static normal equals 100. I know mu static. Mu static is... 0.6 so I can solve for normal normal equals 100 divided by 0.6 um, I have this here this is 167 newtons now if you notice actually normal is the same has the same magnitude as F F equals normal because of action reaction all right so whether you maybe you knew this was uh, going to happen already or maybe you stumbled upon it and then later realize that f equals normal but either way uh, at this point we already have the answer to part a all right so all i had to do is find normal because normal is or has the same magnitude as f so part b here continuing says you want the block um, to begin sliding down the wall so you temporarily push against it with half the value found in part A. What acceleration will it have? So the idea is that um, the force that you're going to use in part, I'm going to call this FB because it's part B, is going to be half of the force in part A. So it's 167 divided by 2 um, and that is 83.3. Okay, very similar setup. I got a 10. But now I'm pushing with a force. I actually know what force it is. 83.3 which means there's a normal pushing back that is also 83.3. What else? Uh, I got the wall over here. Um, whoa. I got the wall here. And there's an mg pulling down. mg is 100 as well. And I have a friction going up. Now, I'm pushing. Um, I'm pushing. I needed 167 to keep it from moving. So if I'm pushing with 83, that's not enough to keep it from moving. So I know that it's going to move. I don't have to check that. Um, I know that because I'm below what I needed, right? So this thing will move, or more, uh, more precisely, it will accelerate down. So it's accelerating, it's picking up speed. So this friction here is actually kinetic, okay? And what we want to know is what is the magnitude of this acceleration here in the y-axis, okay? How do I find acceleration in a force problem? F equals ma. Sum of all forces in the y-axis is mAy. The forces are, I have Fk. I'm going to say that this is positive because it's up. And mg down. Mass is a 10. And Ay is what I'm looking for. Friction kinetic. Let me calculate that here. Friction kinetic is mu kinetic normal. Mu kinetic is 0.4 and normal in this case is 83.3 so friction kinetic um, I have it here somewhere is 33.3 .3. ok 
Okay, so that I can plug in here. I have 33.3 minus 100 equals 10 AY. And if I move things around, I get that AY equals negative 6.67 meters per second squared. Okay, that's it for this part. Now, part C, so negative, it's negative because it's going down. Uh, just to be double sure, I'm going to, just to be super clear, I'm going to put an arrow here to indicate that as well. All right, so part C says shortly after the block begins sliding down, you want to keep it moving, but with a constant speed, right? So you keep changing your mind. So you want to keep moving with a constant speed. Moving with a constant speed means that you want your acceleration of the y-axis to be zero. So in the first part, it didn't move at all. Second part, it accelerated down. And the third part, I wanted to keep moving, but with an acceleration of zero. If I want an acceleration of zero while it's moving, it means that I want my mg of 100 to be exactly matched by my kinetic friction. So the kinetic friction has to be 100 as well. The walls over here, okay? So again, I want these forces to be the same so that they cancel. But this friction here will be, this friction here will be kinetic because even though there's, an, there's no acceleration, this block is moving down, okay? So the setup here, much like how here the setup was mg equals fs, here I want mg to equal fk. fk uh, friction kinetic is mu kinetic normal equals 100. And the question here is how much force must you apply? Okay, so this is similar um, to part A. Remember F and N have the same magnitude, right? Action, reaction. So when I find N, what I'm really doing is finding F indirectly, right? So mu, uh, mu K is 0.4, normal 100. So normal is 100 divided by 0.4. Normal is 250. That means that that is your F as well. Okay, so it takes a force of 250 to keep this thing uh, from accelerating, but it's still going to fall at a constant rate. All right. Um, if you pushed any harder, your friction would be bigger than your mg, and this thing would start stopping. And that's not what we want. It would start slowing down. Okay. So I have two practice problems that I want you guys to try. And let's go into that right now.